Tango decided to park between my legs for this week's episode of the Retro Hunting Adventures, so stay tuned to see what I just got from Stone Age Gamer after these words from Mega Ran. Yo, this is Mega Ran. And you need to rock and or roll on over to Mr. Mega Man Fan's YouTube channel. Because it's all that rush to make it happen. <laughs> Peace! Thanks, as always, for being here. I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan. We've got a lot of different stuff to get into this week, but this package from Stone Age Gamer definitely comes first. I love the packing tape that they use. I wish I could buy a reel of this and seal all my boxes with it, but it's probably going to be inappropriate if I did, because then people would think they were getting packages from Stone Age Gamer. But I love the fact they put the Fresh Prince Bel Air lyrics on there, I love the fact that they tell you the Konami code on the side. I love the references to Metal Gear Solid and Back to the Future. They always mix pop culture and gaming and put it all on their packing tape. It's pretty incredible and it's just one little extra piece of value for a Stone Age Gamer customer. Along with the fact that they have loyalty rewards that if you order products you get a certain number of dollars off your future orders which is one of the many reasons I always come back to Stone Age Gamer. Now that I've got the box properly opened, I can finally reveal the contents to you. And as you can see, it's a translucent red NES game. Even without the bubble wrap off, you can tell that much. But it isn't just any ordinary NES game. In fact, potentially, it's every NES game. Because what we have here is the EverDrive N8 Pro. The latest version from Crix sold through Stone Age Gamer in this custom shell, and I cannot wait to put this thing in my top-loading NES and take it for a spin. In fact, giving credit to Red Hot Sonic here on YouTube where it's due, I might just do my own version of Will It Work on Real Hardware? I could play things like Rockman 4 Minus Infinity on my top-loading NES or my toaster NES using the EverDrive Nate Pro. Most other EverDrives can't handle the file size, but this one will be able to do it. Once again, big shout out to StoneAgeGamer.com. They are not sponsoring this video. I get no hookups other than my regular customer loyalty rewards, but they are aces as far as I'm concerned when it comes to EverDrives and retro products. I've gotten so many controllers and so many cartridges from them that I can't help but praise them for their customer service and the high quality of their items. They have always done right by me. Next up is a long-awaited package from a Nintendo Repair Center in California. I had to get my Joy-Con fixed because I had the dreaded left Joy-Con drift where even when I was standing still, Mario or my villager would still keep moving around. So I didn't want to try to repair it myself because I'm certainly no expert when it comes to fixing controllers and I'm definitely not qualified to deal with something that has as many parts inside of it as a Joy-Con. We're talking about a lithium battery, a rumble controller, a gyroscope, many different moving parts. I don't want to try to unpack all of that, clean out whatever causes the Joy-Con drift, and put it all back together and pray that it still works afterwards. It's under warranty anyway. I think all left Joy-Cons are at this point because so many people have had this issue, but Nintendo did offer to fix it for free, and now my characters don't move around when I'm not moving them, so I'm satisfied. To celebrate getting my Joy-Con back, I went to Half Price Books to see what I could find, but the well has been kind of dry there in 2020. All I could find was an Aussie CD and Sonic Heroes for PlayStation 2. I guess that's better than nothing. My trip to Pop Culture Exchange, on the other hand, was pretty successful because I found four more Wii U games that I didn't already have, starting with 007 Legends, featuring James Bond and even Odd Job, only $12.99 and complete with the manual and disc in the box. 
everything appears to be in good shape, but you can never say never again when it comes to a James Bond game or taking Wii U for granted. You've got to always test these discs, so let's do that right now. As the robots of Mystery Science Theater would say, we've got movie sign. 007 is booting up as it should, and that gives me a high degree of confidence, but I would rather open the game and make absolutely sure because sometimes a disc will load on the title screen and still not read once you actually start playing it. I've been a fan of the James Bond movies since I was very, very little. It was funny because they would always be like the ABC movie of the week and obviously those were heavily edited down versions compared to the theater ones, but they were still good enough to entice me into the world of Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton. I grew up in love with all the different iterations of James Bond. What was funny was Remington Steel was on TV when I was a kid, and I always thought that Pierce Brosnan would make a good James Bond, but it wasn't until well over a decade and a half later that he finally got his chance to star as the titular James Bond of the James Bond movies. But I thought he did a pretty bang-up job as 007. And we have the opening cinematic with the gun muzzle moving back and forth over James Bond and him shooting at whoever was shooting at him and turning the screen blood red. So that is a very good indication that everything is working here because we've got the FMVs, we've got the game playing on the main TV, we've got everything that you would want from James Bond 007 Legends. This was a success and a good value too because I have seen this game a couple of other times in a couple of other places, but they wanted well more than $12.99 for it and that was just a little too rich for my blood. I knew it could be had for cheaper. I tried looking for it on eBay, but it was always going for a higher price too, but this one was finally the right price at the right place at the right time so well worth making the investment hey there's jaws good old richard keel next up is a game i honestly didn't expect to see at pop culture let alone anywhere else hello kitty cruisers is kind of a hard wii u game to come by it doesn't quite fetch the amounts that game and wario or devil's third do but it's not one of the cheaper Wii U games. If you want it complete in box like this, it's going to cost you at least $30. Unless you get stupid lucky at a pawn shop or a thrift store. And I've never seen this game at any of those places, so you'd have to be a lot luckier than me. The most likely reasons this one goes for more than the average would be that it's a late release that they didn't print many copies of because the Wii U was already in its twilight years at that point it was never a big success and then at the tail end if you were still making games for it you probably weren't going to make that many copies of it if you already knew that there was a limited install base for it and then you'd make even less knowing that people were moving on from the wii u to other things then add the fact that hello kitty has always had a huge fandom and sanrio is a popular brand in and outside of Japan anyway, so you kind of got the perfect storm there for desirability plus low print numbers plus very late releases that make up for an expensive game. On top of that, many rare or low print run games are often bad and they didn't sell well and that's why they become valuable, but this one seems to be alright. It's a Mario Kart clone, but it's a good one where the racing takes place on the television and your Wii U control pad shows a top-down view of where you are on the track as well as where your opponents are. I think that's well done. I think that's better use of the Wii U gamepad than a lot of these games make, so props to Hello Kitty Cruisers for doing it right. Getting back to my Wii U pickups, here's LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. It does not come with the instruction manual, but it was only $4.99, so... I thought, why not? Especially since, according to price charting, manuals go for about $2. So if I could find a seller willing to not charge an arm and a leg for shipping and handling for just a paper manual, I could complete this one 
rather easily at a rather low price. Unlike the first two games, I didn't get off scot-free with this one. I had to download an update and then install the update. So there is some patching you get on day one with this game or day 1001, but there are definitely updates you have to download the first time you put the game into your Wii U. At least they install pretty fast, so I won't complain much, especially for the price. For $5, everything here is working and in good condition, sans manual, of course. And it's a Lego game, it's a Marvel game, it's the best of both of those worlds, so I'm pretty happy with covering all those different angles for one low price. The plot, so far as I can tell from the opening cinematic, is that the Silver Surfer has led Galactus to Earth to devour it because, as always, Galactus is hungry. You'd think Silver Surfer would stop trying, given the Fantastic Four and the Avengers always end up opposing him and stopping him and Galactus never succeeds in devouring the Earth, but keep trying he does anyway, so maybe the guy's just got a screw loose somewhere in his Silver Surfer cosmic power-infused body. Well... That's for you to figure out. It's for me to play, and that's it for testing this game. So we've got one more to go. Appropriately enough, since they just announced Alex and Steve for Super Smash Bros., here's Minecraft for Wii U that includes a very special Mario mode. The disc is not inside because I'm already testing it, so let's go see how that looks. On the first attempt, this disc didn't work, and on the second attempt, this disc didn't work, but I took it out, and I gave it a nice polish, and I put it back in, and lo and behold, it started downloading an update. A rather sizable one, too. It took about 10 minutes to download the whole thing, and several more to install it, so... Minecraft is definitely getting lots of updates, even now in 2020, which isn't surprising given the size of the franchise and the popularity of it, so that's to be expected. So, Minecraft is definitely not throw it in and play. You are going to be downloading lots of updates, no matter which gaming platform you decide to play the game on. And believe it or not, this is the first copy of Minecraft I've ever purposefully bought. Minecraft came with one of my Xbox consoles, as a download code and I've never even gotten around to downloading it so this is for real my first time playing Minecraft. It's certainly got elements of other games that I already know like Dark Cloud and Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing where you gather resources, craft things, and then you use the things that you craft to gather more resources and make even more things so I feel like Minecraft should be in my wheelhouse for the kind of games I like to play. And I know there are plenty of people out there who do amazing things with Minecraft. I've seen NES emulators made in Minecraft. I've seen graphing calculators, or was it a standard calculator? But I've seen people make a working calculator with Minecraft. This seems to be like Little Big Planet, where the only limits are your imagination. If you can think of it and you can design it, you can build virtually anything and I love a game that's that open and adaptable to being played any way that you want to play it. There is a way to quote unquote win Minecraft if you get to the nether and defeat the final thing that you can defeat but you don't have to play it that way. You can play Minecraft any way that you want so kudos to Notch and everybody involved in the long and epic history of the Minecraft franchise. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again on another episode of Retro Hunting Adventures really soon. Bye for now.